Before we get into today's video, a quick thank you to everybody who helped blow up last week's video. This is by far one of the better performing videos that I've made in a very, very long time. And I'm not going to lie, it kind of made my week getting to check in every couple days or so and seeing the view count go up. So welcome to all of you new friends. It looks like we've got nine new subscribers or nine new friends. And uh, I don't know how comfortable everybody is with me saying their name on video so I'll refrain from doing that but you guys know who you are and thank you so much for being here and for any of you guys that have watched and liked and uh, just put me over the moon the past week thank you so much it really means a lot that you guys are watching and I hope today's video will be just as great Alrighty, guys gals and non-binary pals welcome back to mad lad instruments and today we are going to be building a gang guitar or what I'm lovingly called the Ging guitar. So this is a guitar based on Gengar, which is my favorite Pokemon. I have Gengar tattooed on my calf. Actually, that's a fun story. And so I wanted to do a little bit of a pop culture homage kind of build to my favorite Pokemon of all time. And for this one, we are doing a PRS style kind of body. It's not exactly like a PRS, it's not a blatant copy. As you can notice on the back here, I've made some modifications. There's a little bit of a contour a shelf near the neck area and so, and I've actually contoured a little bit of the top as well to give it a little bit more of a hand rest or a relief. And after we got through CNCing, the next step is to go through and sand everything up to about 400 grit and get it prepped for filling and staining. I didn't actually do a grain filler on this guitar, so you're going to notice in later shots that the top is going to appear quite porous. And the reason for that is that we are using a very porous cut of wood, a cut known as a nigre, which is a South American wood that we use a lot here at Mad Lad, but it is very porous. And everything, everything gets sanded up. We, it's super duper smooth, as you can see I was wiping it down, and then I take it to my oscillating belt sander. This helps me get around the corners and the edges. As you know, guitars aren't exact square bodies, they usually have contours and curves, and so the oscillating belt sander helps me get into those areas and clean those up. Vacuum up here and I change the belt, so just like I do on my orbital sander, I use a progressive sort of belt sanding style here, or technique here and I progressively use more higher grip belts. I also had to do a little bit of grain filling or a little bit of plastic wood in the truss or the area where the Floyd Rose pocket is because there was some tear out when I was chiseling that out and so we filled that in. Next was to take this beautiful cut of flamed curly soft maple from McKinney Hardwood Lumber. In case you guys didn't know McKinney Hardwood Lumber is my supplier for most every guitar that I build. It's really, really cool. Mike over there is my contact and he runs the whole operation out of his house, which is pretty cool. And yeah, everything from slab to strings is pretty much sourced locally. Well, I don't want to say sourced locally, but like I'm very honored and privileged as a luthier to be able to go to a local supplier and pick out each one of those cuts. And so as you can see, I was cutting or I was miter cutting or ripping those down to the proper blank length and then we get the blank onto the CNC machine and we start carving out the neck. We've got the truss rod pocket right in the middle and that distinct Mad Lad headstock shape at the top there. And these sequences are just super duper mesmerizing. I really enjoy watching these. I hope you guys do too. They're kind of peaceful and kind of therapeutic to watch. You just watch that little machine head or that little spindle head go across the whole thing and it cuts it right out. And then we get to go to the back of the neck, which is one of my favorite things to watch. So check this out here in just a second. You're going to start to see it actually cut the contour of the back of the neck. So it just kind of goes over and over and over. And out of a big old block of wood, you get a nice, beautiful contoured neck back. So we'll just watch it go there. And whoa, what just happened there? Had a little bit of tear out. So naturally, as you can see, there are some mistakes that happen. And there's another little mistake that we have here as well. Look at this fretboard blank. It's not quite straight. And I think that I can get around this, but actually this is gonna come back and bite me in the butt here in a little bit. So you wanna make sure that your fretboard blanks are a uniform thickness and also make sure that your CNC's don't wander off and ruin the neck length as we saw in those previous things. And then we're gonna have another little bit of an error. There's a, a lot of compounding of errors that happen in this particular build, but the reason that I show them is just to show you guys that not everything is sunshine and rainbows. Even I make mistakes. I'm still very much a beginning luthier. And so we're going to see another little mistake manifest right here. You can kind of see it in action, but 
you're gonna see it really quick in just a second right about yeah so I didn't set my depth correctly and as you could tell earlier with the fretboard not being a uniform thickness I wasn't able to get the cut to work correctly and it cut right through to the very bottom so let's try this again really quickly so we're back again carving out the top and this time I actually used a properly thicknessed fretboard blank and now we get to enjoy the mesmerizing CNC carving of Gengar's appearance here or Gengar's silhouette I think you guys are really going to like this fretboard once you see what it actually looks like with inlay and I think that's our next step so once we get everything carved out it's a little hard to see on this particular frame but on this next clip you'll definitely see it pop when we put the color in and I had a little bit of chip out especially near those teeth the walls are very very thin so the CNC machine actually ripped through them and kind of ripped off a chunk there so I was able to save the chunk and glue it black back in place and we go ahead and do that and then we get the board prepped for inlay. Now, inlays are a little bit different here at Mad Lab. The way that I do inlays is a little bit more flexible, I would say. Nothing against using like Mother of Pearl or any of the traditional materials used for inlay work, but I actually like using epoxy. Epoxy gives me kind of the same effect of using abalone or Mother of Pearl. It's got that kind of swirl look to it, but I can mix it with mica powder to get all these cool effects and swirls and stuff like that. And I'm not limited to, I just need to buy a sheet of mother of pearl or material for every single color. I can kind of just mix it up with mica powder. And that's what I do here. Hitting with a heat gun just to get the bubbles out. And then after everything is set and we get the epoxy sort of set in, then we take it back to the CNC machine and carve the actual radius of the fretboard. And things are going pretty well here to kick things off. but. We're going for one pass here, and actually in the file that I was using to radius the board, this goes for two passes. And if you think it looks like a perfect depth right about now, that's what I thought so too. It's like perfect, it gets to the end of the board. But then... Whoa, what the hell? Yeah. So it went for another pass and it completely just munched away the inlay. I really can't catch a break today. But you know what? It's all good though. It's just part of learning the craft. And so, with that in mind, I carved out a new fretboard off camera. I didn't want to bore you guys with it, but we're keeping it 100 here. So now let's talk about stain. We're actually going to get into the process of coloring and staining the guitar. And I hesitate to say staining, because staining is a little bit of a different technique. Really what we're doing here is we're applying color. And the way that I do that is I take Minwax Polyacrylic. This is a polyurethane acrylic hybrid finish and I'm using the ultra gloss here. And what I use with that is I actually mix it with unicorn spit, which is this really, really cool pigment that you can get at your mo local craft store. It's really, really affordable, but it also gets really, really cool colors. And so what I do is I get these mason jars and I put a little bit of polyacrylic in there. And then there's no exact science to this. I probably should document my recipes a little bit better so I can get more consistent colors. But at this stage, it's really just put a couple blobs or a couple drips of unicorn spit in there, mix it up, see if that's the color you're looking for, and then repeat for every other color that you want to do. So for this particular one, I'm going, or this particular finish, I'm going to be using purple and black. I'm going to kind of do a purple, purple to black fade, and it looks really, really good. I think you guys are going to enjoy the result here in just a second, but there's a little bit more of a story to it, which we'll get into in a second. And I'm also a very big fan of natural binding on my guitar, so we went ahead and taped off the edge of the guitar with, I believe that looks like quarter inch uh, painter's tape. And with this, you just want to take your time, make sure that you set the, the tape actually against the grain of the wood so it's not loose, because if it gets loose, then the tape is going to unadhere from the body and you're going to spray finish into that area, which actually does happen on this guitar, and so that's why I'm harping on it. And here you can see I'm putting down a couple layers and with this the color is very very translucent and I was still very early in my guitar building journey so I didn't realize that you have to do multiple passes to build up the layers of color so I have just like slathering on color and that's why you see it's super duper wet and the color isn't consistent but once I come back and I hit it with a little bit of a black fade on the outside we get this really cool kind of purple burst fade which you're gonna see here on the bench in just a second but recovering trying our best to recover this finish and you know living and learning it's one of those times where you know this is a new finish or really I'm new to everything on this but this is a new particular finish that I'm trying out and I had a vision in my head and I think I got pretty close to what I was looking for in my head given my level of experience 
but I'm always open to learning more, and so I will probably learn more in the future, and I'm excited to see what the future finishes look like. And if you're looking at like what I'm thinking, it's like, oh man, this looks really, really great. Yeah, look at this particular neck. Look at that flame. It's almost holographic. So here we have the two pieces, the guitar and the neck. They're finished match. They look just about the same. And this is the part where I get a feeling in my gut. It's just like, don't mess with it any further. And I did the exact opposite of that, and I started to mess with it a little bit further. So I go back and I spray some more color on top of it, and you can debate in the comments if I ruined the finish or not, but with this next pass, I was able to get some kind of swirling, kind of ghastly, like gaseous kind of streaks in it, so it looks very, very cool up close. We'll see some uplopes in a second. And then I start spraying on some clear coat as well. As I'm doing clear coat, I'm also wet sanding progressively between coats. So here you can see I'm doing, I think that's 600 grit, but I go 6, 8, 12, 15, and then 2000 grit. And so the recipe is you do a pass of wet sanding, you lay down two coats of clear coat, and then you wait about two hours for that to cure, and then you progress. You go to the next one. Oh, boy! Yes! Be sure to rate the peel down in the comments. Alrighty, so now we get to the part where we glue up the fretboard to the neck. And at some point, the fretboard actually broke into three pieces, so I had to re-glue them. But thankfully, since we are gluing, gluing them, gluing them, that's a funny word. Since we are gluing them to the neck, we have an opportunity to just like glue everything to the neck, which is sturdy, and the neck is kind of like a structural... I don't know why the word that is coming to my head is a substrate, but basically it's a structural thing that we can glue it to and everything gets set correctly. So that is what we're doing. Just get everything setting up, doing a test fit, making sure everything will sit correctly. And also I need to retouch some areas. That's why you see me pointing here. I'm pointing that I'm gonna have to retouch those areas. There's some epoxy and some color that's a little bit off, but fun little time-lapse here. Get everything glued up, a little bit of tight bond too to get everything. I know it's a Type Bond 3 bottle, but I actually have Type Bond 2 in there. We're upcycling and recycling here at Mad Lad, so we reuse our glue bottles. And once everything gets set, I treat the fretboard with a mixture of boil, binseed oil and weave dryer, which you guys should be no stranger to if you've seen any of my other videos. It's just a mixture of boil, linseed oil and Japan dryer, which helps the linseed oil dry quicker. Also, remember to check the warning labels on all of your oils and chemicals that you use to treat wood because boiled linseed oil can cause spontaneous combustion. So just be safe. That's all I'm saying. And here we are just doing some basic fret work, getting the frets super glued in and slotted in. You can see I'm using a little cotton swab to pick up the super glue to make sure that it doesn't like stay behind. And then we get to polishing. Now, big amateur mistake here. I should have taped off the fretboard. And as you can see, there's I'm doing it now, but there's a little bit of debris or kind of dirt that gets worked into the fretboard that I have to sand back a little bit later. So just make sure that you're always taping down your fretboard before you polish your frets because you don't want to have to sit there and sand away that dirt. It's one extra step that you don't want to have to do. And then from there, we get everything back on. We switch out the, the, the paper underneath and I go ahead and I start angling the frets along the edges and smoothing them along the edge with a little edge edge sander tool here or an edge uh, file. That's the word I'm looking for, that's an edge file. And going through, just passing over, making sure everything is nice and smooth along the edge so that as you move your hand up and down, it doesn't like cut it up. And then we get to buffing and polishing. So I start off with this buffing wheel that I have, I got at Harbor Freight. And I went about it and I started buffling and it looked good, but it was going kind of slow. So instead what I decided to do is I got on Amazon and there's actually these oscillating orbital sander pads that you can get for your oscillating orbital sander and you can use them to polish. And so I'm like, well, why don't I just use the same tool that I've been using for everything else and use it to do progressive polishing. So each one of these have like different hardness ratings to them. So you can use them to progressively polish from like a hard sort of cutting compound all the way up to final polish. And before you know it, we just have a really, really shiny, pretty guitar that's ready for hardware and electronics. So we're gonna call it there for this episode. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. 
Tell me what you guys think down below. If you are a fan of this kind of time lapse with narration style video, then definitely let me know. I find this is one of the easiest types to produce. And also it's a lot shorter <laughs> with other videos that you guys have probably seen where I take you through every step. It does take a little bit longer. So let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of this. I'm not gonna shy away from doing the instructional videos. I think I'm just gonna break them up a little bit more so that people can watch those if they're interested in actually learning like Luthery and how we build stuff here at Mad Lad. But for those of you guys that just wanna chill out for a little bit and watch the time lapse and just watch a cool guitar being built, these are the ones for you. And if you like this format, definitely let me know because I'll keep doing them. So from there, I just wanna say again, thank you guys so, so much, so, so much, so, so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in getting your own Mad Lad guitar, you can find all sorts of information on the Instagram at Mad Lad Instruments. There's an order FAQ area there, as well as instructions on how to order and what kind of instruments that I build. All built here in McKinney, Texas, local, using locally sourced woods and helping you know, local businesses, as well as some parts that have been sourced from online and some well-known brands. So it's a nice little merging of local and more well-known industrial sort of stuff. But yeah, thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. It means the world and do all that good stuff. And more than anything, just be good to one another. Party on dudes. And I actually didn't do this in my last video, but I have a classic outro and you guys should know it. But always remember, friends, that you are wanted, you are loved, and you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has, and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on. You. Can't wait to see you guys in part two of this video. See you then.